tonight on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup, the most iconic cowboy town in the West, Tombstone, Arizona. And we're in for a treat. Archery, pistols, poker, a ton of history, and live action drama in a town too tough to die. Kick off your boots. We're starting right now. Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup, powered by Ram Trucks. Welcome to Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. This week, we go back in time to the gunslinging days of Tombstone, Arizona. This is when the West was truly wild, home to stories of Wyatt Earp and Johnny Ringo, Doc Holliday, and a shootout at the OK Corral. It's a treasure trove of iconic history. In 1877, a prospector named Ed Shifflin came to find silver in this dangerous Apache territory. Locals warned him that the only stone he would find here would be his tombstone. He found his silver, and soon the whole town was built to accommodate new people coming in droves to find their fortune. This began a long history of outlaws and lawmen, cowboys and Indians, saloons, silver mines, and good old-fashioned gunfights. In a town too tough to die, only one name fit, Tombstone. Tombstone Monument Ranch sits at the outskirts and was once the Trapman Homestead. Today, it's the perfect reconstruction of an old American boomtown. The rooms are beautiful and rustic, and each suite is designed to look like a storefront. The lodge is basically a saloon and still a large part of the original structure from 1880. Some Apaches were hostile to settlers, and this spot on the hill offered a wide open view of the entire valley. There's even an escape hatch in the floor, and it's been used more than a few times. The monument is right where Ed Shifflin wanted to be buried, and we're taking a tequila ride out there to pay our respects. My daughter Spencer is here this week, and we're getting saddled up now to hit the dusty trail. My name is Mike. Making a few stops, I'll be explaining some history to y'all. Then we'll get to the tequila just a little bit later. That sounds so good. This was known as Watervale, first settlement in Tombstone. The reason they called it Watervale was as the seepage of water came out. So they had access to water. You're going to see some stacked rocks. It was one of the first stores in this town. It was called Goose Flats at that time. You can actually see some of the hand stacked rocks right there. Just right here? Yeah, some of those are hand stacked. Long before prospectors arrived, Native Americans roamed these lands. There are still clear signs of their presence. Let's go up and have a look. One of them that kind of looks like a stick figure of a person means that they was a tribe of the ant people of the Apaches claimed this is their camp area. Also the swirls that you're going to see on the rocks. That means earth, life, and universe. The Apaches been here for over 900 years. Yeah. There's no telling how old these really are. They almost look like dance moves or some type of worship. These drawings are just a few yards from another artifact. This railroad was built in 1903. That was the first time a train ran it. So when the train appeared here in 1903, that was also the last time a stagecoach arrived in Tombstone. There was no more need for it. It was the end of an era. This train was robbed about two miles down the tracks, 1905. Come to find out, it was two of Tombstone's constables that had robbed it. After two months of being in the county jail, they escaped. They came to the ranch that sets where our ranch does today, stole two horses. They caught one of them, he was shot and killed. The other was never heard from again. The monument is a bold and visible tribute to the man who made Tombstone. He wished to be buried with his pick and his canteen. He got his wish. 1879, a guy was in this area walking. He ran up on a couple of soldiers out of Fort Huachuca. They asked him what in the world he was doing here because of all the Apaches. Said he was in search of silver. They told him the only rock he would find would be his tombstone. Well, he did strike silver here. He went on to open five silver mines here in this town. He renamed it to Tombstone because of what the soldiers had told him. His will was to be buried in Tombstone with his miner's clothes, his pick, his shovel, and his canteen. And he is buried under the monument. They say that he hid from Apaches and that group of rocks up there. He didn't care about the money. It was just the thrill of hunting the silver. Oh, 
Okay, sir. He's, he's good. Everybody, cheers. 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 Thank you, Mike. Oh, you're Thank welcome. You, David, for bringing us up here. <laughs> okay, We're so where are we off to now? Down the road and back to the ranch. Okay. Then what? to the bar. Then to the bar or Then barn? to the bar. Ooh, I'm glad he took the N off that. <laughs> When we come back, we're gonna hone our skills with a pistol and a bow. Play poker with Wyatt Earp and head into town, right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. For more information on Tombstone Monument, visit tombstonemonumentranch.com. If you've never had an open fire breakfast, cooked by a grizzled cowboy with gravel in his voice and mud in his coffee, and you're just not living right. Okay, I got bacon and sausage, cowboy beans, eggs, hash browns, and tortillas. You leave hungry, it'll be your own fault. Now, if you plan on going into town, it's a good idea to brush up on handling a pistol. A dead eye and a fast draw can be all the difference between life and death in the wild, wild west. Okay, what we're gonna be firing are, uh, they're called single action revolvers. What you wanna do is squeeze the trigger as opposed to pull the trigger. Uh, you want to be surprised basically whenever the gun goes off. We'll start with the 22, just to warm up. Start with the 22, it's a lighter load, doesn't kick as much. And then we'll work you up to the 45. Okay, we'll get her loaded up. Is this a pretty authentic gun we're using? Today? Yes, it is a replica. So you guys ready? Who's yep. going first? You go first, sissy. Whenever you're ready. There Ooh, you, go. you did a great job, Spence. There you go. Can I get that big old deer? Have at her. There you go. Dead on. Got him. That was fun. Whew, there's quite a difference between the 22 and the 45 long Colt revolver. This one packs quite a punch. Good shot. You got it. <laughs> got him. There you go, we got him in the leg. Oh! Got him. It's a little louder. What? What? <laughs> got him. I close my eyes, I don't see. Don't close your eyes. <laughs> I close my eyes. Did I get that? I don't know what you were aiming for. The deer? Yeah. Yeah, I think you did get him. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. My ears are still ringing. Now, we're gonna do another type of shooting, but it involves a bow and an arrow. Come with us. As soon as I can get this thing unloaded. You can go now. Well, we hit the trail back to the ranch. The choyo out here are sharp, and when someone tells you not to touch them, it's probably best that you listen. Is this the choya? Yeah, that's choya and that's the flower. Be careful, those bite. Gorgeous, but. yeah. they're. This is not the jumpy one. No. Ow! That was beautiful and put it in my hair. <laughs> Ouch. The weapon of the Apache is deadly silent. The bow and arrow are just as iconic to the Old West as a desert cactus, and just about as tricky to handle. Hello. Well, hi there. You're here for archery, huh? Uh, yes, we are. First timers, both of us. First time, okay. Yeah. The bow is a long bow. When you pull this thing all the way back, yeah. You've got 25 pounds, you're gonna throw that arrow down there at, the, at those balloons. Wow. You wanna use the three finger method. One finger above the arrow, two fingers below. Okay. Since this is your first shot, see what happens. Whoa, oh, now that's close. I'm happy with the way you're doing it, and uh, I don't see any problem. Oh. Well, that's a problem. <laughs> no, so I'm gonna have to it get means that. you have to walk after and get it. Oh, oh my God. Can you believe that? <laughs> All the way around it. Uh -huh. Cage that little baby. Good. It's a good shot. Oh! And a mm -hmm. balloon, too. I was going for the uh, for the target. You're, you're never supposed to <laughs> I mean, say I was that. going for that balloon. <laughs> you guys have caught on to this very quickly. You an idea that. There you go. That was fun. We did good. Yes, you did. You did very good. Thank you. <laughs> you know, for beginners, uh, 
you don't usually shoot that good. Oh, well, did you hear that? So, for beginners, you don't I, I, shoot that good, so yeah, watch yourself. Do I take credit for that? Every night is the buzz of activity at the old Trapman Saloon. Good music, great food, and lively conversation. A nice hot bath at sunset is a great way to end any day. When we come back, we saddle up and head into town. Tombstone awaits. And we're excited to see what's in store. Right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup, powered by Ram Trucks. We're going into Tombstone. There's a lot to do today. Come with us. I'm sure you're gonna have a great time. Let's go, cowboy. Welcome to Tombstone. Well, thank you so much. Newcomers head to Big Nose Kate's Saloon for spirits and vittles. Big Nose Kate was the wife of Doc Holliday, and her history is just as interesting and scandalous as this town itself. So Russell, tell me a little bit about this place. How did uh, Big Nose Kate get her name? You have any idea? So Big Nose Kate was, uh, first of all, the girlfriend, and they had a volatile relationship of Doc Holliday. Oh, okay. And she was also a madam. And she became known as Big Nose Kate, but she was really Nosy Kate because she was in everybody's business. Mm, okay. So. I see all these sexy pictures of her all over the place, laying on beds, shooting guns, playing with guns. Uh, it's pretty I think hot. Yes, and apparently she was not that hot. Some of her girls may have been, but apparently she was not known for her good looks. Really? This building used to be the luxurious Grand Hotel, with plenty of infamous guests. Even a few men involved in the shootout were staying here. This Big Nose Kate's saloon now, which is one of the most famous saloons in, in the entire West, literally, was the Grand Hotel, built in 1880 at the very uh, pinnacle of Tombstone's history. And if a lot of it burned, but this is the part that remained. Yeah. And you know, everybody who was anybody in Tombstone came through these doors at one time or another. There's also the unique feature that if you go down, there's a mine entrance in the basement of this hotel slash Big Nose Cave. Oh my God, I'd love to see that. Yeah, Can we see that? We'll, we'll definitely, once we've had a beer okay. or two, we'll, we'll head down there. Wow. Oh, wow. What is that painting over there? The, the painting with the gun? Yeah. That's Josephine. Hey, here's, here's a tombstone Cheers. and it's all the history. Cakes. That's fun. Whoa. What is all this? What this was this was part of the mine? So this is the mine right here. And as you know, behind here was the bar. But the Swamper, as he was known, lived here. You can see his bed, and you can see the shaft heading down. And the whole mine Check has been out. preserved. Oh my goodness. That's fantastic. It has been preserved. Nothing. Yep. This is exactly how it was. Absolutely. A stagecoach ride through the town is a pretty classic way to see the sights and the people. It's like being on a movie set, and it's easy to forget that you're still in the real world. I mean, it doesn't get much better than this. The stores, the shopping, this is incredible. Heard about it, rode in here on our horses today. And rode back in time. Yeah. In 1885, a young miner from Scotland and his wife planted a Scottish rose tree in their yard, and it flourished. Over 130 years later, it is the largest in the world 
and just as strong and beautiful as ever. Wow, tremendous. This is all one rose tree. I would love to see this in blue. You can work through the troughs and learn how to pan for gold and silver, or purchase some amazing handcrafted leather pieces made right here in town. The showdown at the OK Corral is the most famous gunfight in the history of the American West. The shootout lasted just a few seconds, but the legend will last forever. Uh -oh. All right, throw up your hands, boys. We're here for your guns. Boys, it's not what I want. You white, I'm out of the gun. I can defend it. Get up, get. All right, Lugger. Okay, you done. One left for you. Hey, Z, if you <laughs> These iconic good. stories and legendary characters of the Wild West have inspired books, songs, TV shows, and movies for decades. This is like going back to the place that started it all. When we come back, we explore a silver mine, the infamous Birdcage Theater, and play poker with none other than the great Wyatt Earp on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. For more information on Tombstone Monument, visit tombstonemonumentranch.com. The birdcage in Tombstone was a theater, saloon, and house of ill repute. It attracted the good, bad, and ugly from all over. Come on in. What is this room? This is our uh, dance hall and casino floor. This is where everything happened back in the old days. Well, and now were those little areas where people could have their own private seating area? So to speak, wink, wink. Yes. Oh. Uh -huh. Upstairs was the main brothel. There are 14 rooms, seven lining each side of the casino floor. This was very, very expensive here. It was called the Elite Theater at one time before they renamed it the Birdcage. Dubbed the most wild and wicked night spot between Basin Street and the Barbary Coast, this old place has more than a few stories to tell and enough bullet holes to prove it. You know, this is actually where the bandana duel took place. Over here is where Doc Holliday dealt cards from time to time. This is the original Pharaoh table. Really? This is in the original one? This is the original table. If you remember in the movie, Doc Holliday, Val Kilmer, killed uh, Johnny Ringo out of a place called Turkey Creek. Turkey Creek is where Johnny Ringo was killed and buried, uh, but the bandana duel actually took place here. So you'll take a bandana or a belt or something like that and pull it apart and go in a very small circle and pull your weapon at almost point blank range very deadly. It's just that when it happened in this particular what? building, the only thing that got hurt was the floor. I love that it's still kind of intact, just the way it was. It's exactly left like it was in 1889 when we closed the doors. It was 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that shift was because the miners always worked 24 hours a day in three shifts. Silver miners alone could fill up the saloons and theaters. The mining business built this town, and at the time had dozens of prosperous sites along the mineral belt. Look at it. Don't touch that. That whole thing will come down on your head. Dead head. Yeah, this one here drops 400 feet. In a row. Actually, there's one here that goes down a thousand feet. Okay, this is so cool down here in more than one way. It's probably about 66 degrees, maybe less. It feels really good. I had to take my jacket off because I was getting hot up there. This used to be people's workplace. Oh, yeah, going to work. Yeah, you don't have to run and make rocks fall and stuff. Don't walk like you're nervous. I am a little nervous. Don't raise my voice. My mom hates rocks like this. This was the lamps they used down here. So what they would do is they would put carbide in here, add water to it, let it burn. Thanks. Madame Mustache has an old-time picture studio where you can really get into the spirit of things. These vintage costumes complete our transformation. Now we're bona fide. Well, we're gussied up for a night out, so we're going to head back to the ranch for some Texas Hold'em with Wyatt Earp. We just walked into the old Trapman Saloon. Next up, we're going to go through those doors and see if we can get a seat and play a little Texas Hold'em with Wyatt Earp. He looks just like him. Pharaoh was his real game of choice, but tonight, it's poker night. Well, I have a lot, and I just yeah, got here, so absolutely. I'm going for it. You want to play? Please. He's in. Wild Walt, are you scared? Are you in for two, Bordello Ball? No fear. No fear. And the Dream Team over here for two. 
That's Sassy Susan and Dangerous Brian. And they're in. This here is Buttons. Be careful of Buttons. Yeah, be very careful of Buttons. She's all over the place. Jumping Jim. This is not a particularly exciting hand, but what if she's got a pair of seven? Okay. But here's our next step. I'm totally winning this round. You uh. very well may. Well, I'm out. She may. <laughs> Confidence is good. Now, you start the betting, Jumping Jim. You can she bet. checks. That passes the option to you. You can bet or check. Okay. Passes the option to you. She passes the option to you. You can check and pass the option or Hey, you, you can can't bet. do that until I've made up my mind. Exactly. Yes. Good for you. Oh, that is nice. a we have a He knows. Don't go it out of turn. turn. You can bet or check. Oh, God. Maximum bet. <laughs> Maximum <laughs> bet. Here she comes. You can. Your max bet is 100. You can do Coming it. Coming after you. Now, Walt Foles, what no do you think? Fear, You're not scared, are you? 100 to the dream team. 100 to you, Buttons. Can you do it? Oh, she ain't scared. She ain't scared. What do you think, Denmark? Denmark? Um, That's a fold. All right, so a pair of sevens. A pair of sevens. Very exciting. Four buttons. That's 40. I think. Are you in or not? She's folded, so it's 40 to you. 40, a call of 40. No fear. You are not scared of nothing. Love it. Dream Team, where's your cards, Dream Team? Where's your cards? Buttons for 40. Fold. Buttons is the only smart one wow. at the table. She's out of there. Last Rock card. Roll. Let's see if it's worth. Should we bet again? Yes, last yes. card, five here. So six, seven, eight. This is as good as it gets. That's your hand. You get to make the last round of betting. You can start with a bet or a check. 40 again, 40 to you. Wow. 40 to you, they're devious. Yeah, because I just like playing. Of course you do, 40 to Bordello. 40 to the Dream Team. They ain't scared. They called you, turn your cards up. What do you have? You got, she's got sevens and, hey, that's not bad. A pair of sevens and a pair of sixes. What do you got there, Devious? She's got sixes and sevens as well. And you got twos and sevens. What you got, Dream Team? Six, seven, eight, nine. nine. Yeah, she was close to the straight, but she didn't hit it. They are going to split the pot because their best five cards are that? sixes, sevens, and an eight. These two cards do not come into play because they both play the eight instead of these. So split pot. Well done, Devious. Well done, Joe. Thank Jones. you. Yeah. Not Nicely. so bad. Break them no, in. No, I got to break them Break them in. in. There you go. So. But she didn't have the ace. <laughs> I think we've created a monster here. It's the perfect way to end our time here. At a saloon, around the card table, enjoying the same leisure time as a working class miner or a cowboy in the Wild West. This was one of the last boom towns of the American frontier, and Tombstone Monument Ranch gives guests the opportunity to walk directly in the footsteps of history. The folklore of the wild frontier, the legends of the West, and the town that made it famous. What more could you ask for? Well, it's been a blast, but we got to ride into the sunset. I hope to see you next time on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup. When you're ready to book your Dude Ranch vacation, visit our website for more information. And don't forget to tell them you saw it right here on Debbie Dunning's Dude Ranch Roundup.